Kwaitinin Deluisi Pambometer. I come from the sovereign Mi'kmaq Nation on unceded Mi'kmaq. My home community is Ogbeganjig, which is Eel River Bar First Nation. But today I'm coming to you from the sovereign territory of the Mississaugas of Scugog. And I have the incredible honor of hosting this very special event, the Carol Geller Human Rights Award for 2021. This year's award will acknowledge honor, celebrate, and support an incredible group of Indigenous land defenders. It's important to understand that Indigenous land defenders often go unrecognized for their foundational human rights work that they do, and they take significant risks to their personal safety, freedom, and well-being to protect the human rights of all of us. They take up that responsibility to assert, defend, and live for our collective human rights. That's right. Indigenous rights are human rights, and they impact all of us. This territory that is now known as Canada is full of old growth forests, trees that are older than we are, that have been standing for multiple generations. They give us the air we breathe and provide homes for birds, animals, and insects. Each year, millions of Canadians enjoy the thousands of lakes, rivers, and coastlines that have sustained us for hundreds of years and are home to many species of fish. Some of these lands are protected as federal and provincial parks, and other lands are set aside as protected wetlands or green belts to protect nature from destructive parks. All of these lands, whether protected under Canada's laws or not, belong to Indigenous peoples. Every acre of land in what is now known as Turtle Island belongs to one of 60 to 80 traditional Indigenous nations. And an essential part of protecting human rights of Indigenous peoples includes recognizing the rights of Indigenous nations to govern their territories, which includes benefiting from the resources and protecting the lands and waters from destructive projects. We are all facing a global climate crisis that demands that we stop destroying the planet and take steps to restore the harm that has been done. In this way, Indigenous human rights defenders and land defenders are leading the way for all of us. There is no time more important than now to support Indigenous human rights defenders in this critical work. We live in a country that's governed by human rights laws, or it's supposed to be, and that includes Indigenous laws, Canadian laws, and international laws. Yet, we are in the middle of a national human rights crisis of epic proportions when it comes to Indigenous peoples because of Canada's failure to implement and respect and enforce human rights, human rights generally and human rights specifically for Indigenous peoples. Governments and industry trample Indigenous rights with the aid of law enforcement, and they continue to ignore the calls by the United Nations human rights treaty bodies to stop the violence. In 2019, the United Nations Committee for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, under its early warning and urgent action procedure process, wrote Canada expressing grave concerns about Canada's refusal to consider free prior and informed consent as a requirement for all large scale projects on indigenous lands that could impact our rights. UN CERD was so disturbed and alarmed by the escalating threats of violence against peaceful indigenous land defenders and called on Canada not just to cease the destruction of Site C Dam, Coastal Gasling Pipeline and Trans Mountain Pipeline, but to make sure they had free prior and informed consent before they went any further and to make sure that no force would be used against Indigenous land defenders and that includes having the RCMP and their weapons withdrawn from Indigenous territories. Canada responded to this letter by saying that free prior and informed consent only means meaningful dialogue. So UN CERD had to issue another letter expressing its concerns about this impoverished interpretation of what is clearly a requirement for consent. 
It also expressed concerns that Canada hadn't reported on taking any steps to implement its previous letter. Now, Canada has until November 15th, next week, to report on how it is lifting up and protecting the human rights of Indigenous peoples on these projects, including the Trans Mountain Pipeline. We know all of these projects are continuing. We can see it every day by video and pictures on social media. And this is why this event today is so important. Human rights defenders are doing the work we need to literally save the planet. And today is a special event that brings together Indigenous human rights defenders and human rights allies and advocates who have been doing this work for decades to celebrate everything that's happening. And I would love to introduce everybody. First, we have Sheila Day. Sheila Day is a phenomenal. She has been working on human rights forever. She has been an advocate, an ally, uh, someone out there asserting, defending and protecting human rights here in Canada, but also at the international level. She was also the first director of the Saskatchewan Human Rights, which is pretty amazing. And she continues to advocate at the international level. And thank you personally to Sheila that she has been helping me along the way so that I can advocate at the international level as well. Thank you very much for being here, Sheila. The other advocate that we have joining us today is Kathleen Ruff. She is another hardcore warrior who has been at this for literally decades. She's a human rights advocate. She's been challenging Canada and she helped defeat the asbestos industry. She took Canada head on and said, we are not going to engage in projects or work or use materials that harm people or the planet and she was successful she won an award from the quebec national assembly for doing that so thank you so much for being here and uh, i've invited you here today as part of the awards committee the carol geller awards committee and i understand that there was also another member murray dobbin and um he can't be here today but he was a critical part of this award and maybe sheila you can start us off and share the background of this carol geller award and maybe speak a little bit to why murray couldn't be here today i'd be happy to do that and pam thank you so much i'm so pleased to be here today it's just really exciting um, this award was set up in 1987 in the name of carol geller Carol Geller was a dedicated and tireless advocate for human rights. She was a feminist. She was a supporter of the rights of Indigenous peoples. She began her work in human rights in about 1967 when she was the president of the Manitoba Voice of Women. She became the first director of the Saskatchewan Human Rights Commission, where she helped design the most progressive human rights legislation in the country of, at the time. Then she went to law school and she got two degrees at law school. And then she went and became the first director of the Pay Equity Bureau in Manitoba. Carol died. Carol was a friend. Carol died too young in 1987 of cancer. And in her name, we set up this award um, to honor her progressive work in the human rights field. And the award is given from time to time uh, to support advocates and activists who make outstanding contributions to the advancement of human rights and to those who stand up, who are confronting sexism, racism, disability discrimination, poverty, and colonial dominance. Defending human rights is not easy work, and those who are committed to it often find themselves in conflict with governments, corporations, and police just for trying to ensure that human rights are respected and upheld. In Carol Geller's spirit, the award, award has been given over the years to individuals and groups that stand up for their own rights and for the rights of others with courage and vision. And I wanna give you just a little sense of who are the, the previous um, recipients of this award. Um, Idle No More, Idle No More will be familiar to many of you. 
It was started by four First Nations women from Saskatoon, Sheila McLean, Sylvia McAdams, Nina Wilson, and Jessica Gordon. And they brought people together to defend Indigenous sovereignty, the land, and its resources, and democracy. We also gave the award to Sharon McIver, um, someone may, who may also be familiar. Um, Carol, um, Sharon McIver um, may be best known as the plaintiff in McIver versus Canada, which was a constitutional challenge, groundbreaking constitutional challenge to the sex discrimination in the Indian Act in the status provisions. And those status provisions have excluded women and their descendants for decades from being entitled to status. Sharon has won all her cases. She's still fighting to make sure that the women and their descendants actually get their status and the benefits of it. So that gives you some sense of the previous uh, recipients of the award. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Sheila, because it goes to show just how proud, profound Carol's work was but also the people who were getting this award. I mean, I, I don't know more that, and, and Cher McIver and everyone else who listed, that's just so important. Um, Kathleen, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about your other member who was on this awards committee, Murray, and, and how important he felt it was to give this award to these kind of human rights defenders, and then let us know who the award winner is. I'd be very happy to do that. Uh, Marie Dobbin was the third member of our committee to award the Carol Geller Human Rights Award. He was a courageous defender of human rights and democracy. He worked tirelessly to challenge and resist the takeover of Canada by the fossil fuel industry and corporate power, which are the issues that the tiny house warriors are fighting on behalf of us all. Sadly, he died in September this year. In one of the last conversations I had with him, we talked about giving the Carol Geller Human Rights Award to Kenna Has Manuel and the Little House Warriors. He had been a full part of this decision and it gave him great happiness to know that it was about to happen. Canada has signed the UN Declaration, many UN declarations, such as the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and the UN International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination. But it is failing to respect those conventions that it has signed, those commitments that it has promised to uphold, to uphold. It is easy to sign a declaration, but what counts is honoring and complying with that declaration. That shows if you're truthful, if you're genuine, or if you're just a facade, a pretty, pretty front. When words and actions contradict one another, as they are right now with what is happening with these fossil fuel developments, it is the actions that speak truth. It is the actions that show what our governments and our values as Canadians truly are. Tiny house warriors are fighting for indigenous rights. They are also fighting for the rights of every single one of us here in Canada, for our well-being, for the health of our planet. I am extremely proud pleased and honored to announce today that the Carol Geller Human Rights Award is given to the Tiny House Warriors for their work to ensure that the Trans Mountain Pipeline Extension Project does not proceed on the traditional territories of some peoples without their free, prior and informed consent, as is required by the Universal Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. It is also given to support their work to ensure that indigenous women and girls are protected from the known threat of violence and abuse posed by large man camps built on their territory. I am very honored on behalf of the committee to announce this award. It includes a, a donation of $15,000 because we know 
how much they need tangible support, practical support, as well as moral support and support in the spirits of Canadians. I hope very much and I invite, encourage every Canadian to support this human rights battle, which is critical to our country and our truth and critical to the well-being of the planet. I encourage them all to donate support in a practical way and support fully with their hearts and their minds and their souls. Thank you, Tiny House Warriors, for what you are doing for all of us. It is heroic. It is inspiring. It is totally wonderful. And let me say thank you, too, for all the work that you're doing. We so admire and appreciate it. And we want to stay with you in the struggle. That's just so incredible. I mean, all the people in the world, of course, Ken House Manual and the Tiny House Warriors. This is just so amazing. And thank you, Sheila. And thank you, Kathleen, for giving us the background. And for Murray in spirit, who couldn't be here, but wanted to make sure that Kanahoos and Tiny House Warriors got it. That's just so amazing. So we're going to bring forward Tiny House Warriors right now. And we're also going to bring forward a special guest who wants to help celebrate with Tiny House Warriors. Chief Cook Bee Chief Judy Wilson, of course, because she is a warrior herself. First of all, congratulations! Yay! That's so awesome! And, and I can see from where you are right now, you're literally there. You're not in a boardroom somewhere. You're literally on your territory with your family, with the other tiny house warriors and the tiny houses. That's just awesome, Kanahoos. Uh, Chief Judy Wilson, she is um, from the Union of BC Indian Chiefs, but in order to understand who Chief Judy Wilson is, like we call her Chief Judy, but she is a warrior in every form. She's a warrior in her territory. She's a warrior nationally here in Canada on the international stage. She's she's not even on Turtle Island right now. That's how much of a warrior she is. She is out there getting the work done. And she knows what it means to be a warrior, the important work that has to be done and all of the ways that Canada tries to, to intervene. And um, she would like to um, obviously congratulate Tiny House Warriors today, but she also wanted to speak a little bit about why the work that Tiny House Warriors does is so important. Welcome, Chief Judy. Yeah, well, I'd like to provide that uh, request. Uh, thank you so much for having me on the show today and, you know, the understanding, you know, uh, what we talked about earlier, what human rights is and what it means to, you know, our land defenders and our water protectors and to, you know, all of the ones, our knowledge keepers that are on the land. And uh, what we're out here at COP26 doing is educating the world really on, you know, our land defense and our land rights. And also, you know, that our indigenous people actually brought down a lot of the emissions uh, by doing the resistance on the, on the land, on the ground. And then the front lines, we actually reduced a lot of the emissions going up into the atmosphere. And if it wasn't for our land defenders and our water protectors, we'd be in, in a much more dire straits right now in regards to climate warming and uh, uh, the climate crisis. So I think, you know, little, very little recognition and very little acknowledgement goes out to our land defenders. You only hear them in the news that, you know, Canada criminalizes them and they arrest them and they, you know, uh, say that they're being destructive, whereas it's really the other way around. Uh, Trans Mountain is owned by Canada, uh, by Trudeau. And, you know, he's trying to be out here at COP26 in Scotland and Glasgow being a climate leader. But it's really contradictory when he says he's going to put a cap on oil and gas. And we know uh, out on our territory, the 518 kilometers of the Trans Mountain Pipeline is going through. It goes through a lot of the waterways and watercourses. So, you know, uh, you know, our hands go up. We applaud Tiny House Warriors and Kanahus and her family for standing in land defense and for land rights. Because we are actually the uh, owners of our land. Uh, we are the proper title holders. Uh, Canada has no deed to our lands or the province. We've never never ceded, surrendered, or sold, or relinquished, or were reconquered in war. 
so we still have our land and it's uh, you know, they, they can do the mechanisms of the UN declaration. They've actually have the federal legislation bill and the provincial bill. But we know in our heart, it's uh, the Sequentum law jurisdiction and our rights that are on the ground first and our legal orders. Uh, that was bestowed to us as caretakers of the land. And we do it through ceremonies. We do it through enacting our laws as which tiny house warrior is warriors are doing. They're standing up our Sequentum laws. Then you layer with the UN Declaration, which is a minimum human rights standard, and that's free prior informed consent, and we have the self-determination, and we have all the land territory resource clauses as well. So those are all the human rights mechanisms that Canada still has to implement, and we say it has to be implemented fully as international law. And we do have the uh, special rapporteur, uh, We'll be doing country visit and also MREP will be coming to Canada as well. And also the water, um, water uh, special rapporteur too. We met him aware, while we're out here at, at Scotland and all the different lobbying and advocacy uh, work we're doing out here. Uh, we met with the minister of Scotland who really aligned herself with the rights of nature, the uh, indigenous people's work and, uh, you know, the, the, wanted to understand it more so she said she wanted to help and support the indigenous people if the minister you know scotland uh, for environment and climate change can get it you know uh we're working to also at those other levels for the other countries to also support that there's many many countries uh that are uh especially the island nations and uh some of the uh drier countries too as well uh they're really under uh under a lot of pressure regarding the global warming and climate change and, uh, you know, especially with flooding and then also drought. And in our, na in our community, in our nation, we see that already. We had wildfires this year uh, that burned up uh, a good part of the communities and uh, some literally some towns in Lytton. And we also have drought already. And we also had severe snowstorms. We had all kinds of different uh, severe weather events already. So, you know, uh, people are saying, you know, with that heat dome too, that killed just under 600 people within a week and a half or a couple of weeks, you know, those are the kind of things that the climate crisis is bringing. And our people that are standing up for the land defense, the human rights, now it's the cri climate crisis. These are the frontline warriors that we need to be protecting our land and, and making people think, making people think what they do every day. And we can't have the man camps either because of missing, murdered, indigenous women and two girls, uh, two spirit. You know, we have all of those issues too. Uh, so we don't want man camps. We don't want dirty oil and gas or tar sand oil, especially, which the Trans Mountain Pipeline is. And we need to change the course that we're going. And sometimes, you know, it does take you know, people going out in the land like what Tiny House Warrior did. And we were just talking about that. Uh, Casey Camp Hortnick, who is a, a strong land defender in North America, she wanted to uh, give her blessing and her love to Kanahus and her family as well. She was here earlier. And she's, um, we're here at the Indigenous Climate Action Dinner today. And uh, Casey was there. She's up here doing some lobbying and advocacy too. But she knows Kanahus and she knows all the work that takes to do uh, land defense because they did in Standing Rock too, where a lot of our, our people were criminalized and arrested. And um, so we're doing what we can out here. And I just wanted to make sure I got on it. I think it's like uh, nine or 10 o'clock over here. Uh, but I wanted to make sure to acknowledge uh, Kanahus and her mother, uh, Beverly, and her sisters and all the amazing work. And, it, you know, when she first talked about the tiny house warriors, I was, you know, I was getting the vision already because, you know, we went through stuff with Sun Peaks where they bulldozed houses down and stuff like that that was built. And, you know, she talked about, you know, putting it on wheels. And now they're the experts on tiny house building. You know, they're very beautiful uh, made uh, units and, you know, they can move them around the territory and they have an elders one and beautiful murals painted on there and they're functional. And it's also addressing our housing shortage as well as we have as, uh, as Scrappen people. But, uh, you know, this is what it takes. And so my hands go up and all of my love and all of, you know, all of my heart and, uh, you know, all of the blessings, because it's really hard being out in the front line. You're like, you know, when I visited, you know, it, it's really extreme uh, conditions our tiny house warriors are living under. And, you know, um, 
the government and uh, that you know tried to divide us in a lot of ways, and they still try all kinds of things. But tiny house warriors keep going, and they truly are land defenders of our nation. And so I wanted to say thank you, Cooks Jam, you know, for all the work that they've done over these many years already, and the continued work that they're going to do. But now, you know, tiny house is standing up against climate crisis, and the world is saying that that that's what we need to do here at COP26. And I'm so proud, my relatives and um, tiny house warriors is already doing that. Thank you. Well, thank you, Chief Judy, and thank you, Tiny House Warriors. Congratulations. How does it feel? This is like, this is so amazing. And I see, Ken, who's maybe for everybody who's watching, you can introduce everyone who's there. Yeah, I like the quiet tip. Hello, everybody. Greetings. Um, I just want to say thank you, Cooks Jam, um, for this honor of this amazing Human Rights Award. And I'm standing here with my mother, um, Beverly Manuel, and my and my sister, Ray Crow, and my brother, Chip. And there's others here on the front lines with us, but we're the ones here brave enough to stand in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome. But we want to say thank you. And that in our language, you say cook's jam. And it's been a hard, almost four winters here on the front lines here at Tiny House Warriors. But we had a vision that we're going to stop this pipeline and a mission, a big mission. And it was Tiny House Warriors that a group of women came together and our family to say, this is going to be the way that we're going to fight. And we're going to build tiny houses on wheels and deploy them all along the pipeline route in our territory to assert our Sifatmuk rights and our title to our land, um, our sovereignty. And that as human rights defenders, and my father would always say, that it's the land and self-determination that we are fighting for. And as human rights defenders, we know that as Indigenous people, we have a right to land and we have a right to self-determination. And that includes homes and that includes exclusively going and living on our territory without the in interference from Canada or the colonial government. So thank you again. And I wanna just give it over to my mother and our elder. Okay, cook stamp everyone for it's it's an honor to accept this award, this human rights award. Uh, we don't really think of you know awards when we're out here in the territory, or unceded Sukhapma territory, and every day we see you know destruction going on from this pipeline, and it's really hurtful. Uh, and. You know, my dedication is to the land and to the people and for our future generations, because it's our future generations that need, you know, need this beautiful territory, like not just here, but, in, you know, in other unceded territories. And I'd like to thank you all again, and thank you, Judy, and thank you, Shiva, and Pam. Pam. <laughs> Pam. Thank you. and. Mm -hmm. and I'll continue being here with my family for the future generations. Good job. This is my niece. She always does a lot of really good hard work here on the front line. She's not she just really speak, but she does a lot of good work on the front line up here. Right okay. on. And, and your brother. Chip, he's one of our chefs. <laughs> he does a lot of cooking for us. The most important guy there. <laughs> And he was arrested, um, arrested up here. Uh, he put his life on the line. Mm -hmm. and he was arrested. He's got charges. Yeah. Charges coming up. Or he's got charges. Yeah. That's what I heard about. Well, Karen, I was wondering if you wanted to talk a little bit about that because you know we're we're talking you know about this award today and the fifteen thousand dollars that can help go to Tiny House Warriors legal fees. But for people who don't really understand what Indigenous land defenders do, I'm wondering if you can talk about some of the challenges that you face. Because just in our discussions, I mean, you've been harassed, you've faced violence, surveillance, criminalization. I mean, I wonder if you could just explain a little bit to people what you've kind of gone through while you're doing your land defense. Yes, being here on the land with our boots on the ground, our moccasins on the ground. We've 
had to face a lot of attacks by the government, including just the RCMP, um, the different ministries that are continue to per, um, permit these projects without us having any type of say whatsoever, even though we continue to say no to these to these projects, to this man camp. And myself personally have faced arrest. We've, I've got my wrist broken at the hands of the RCMP, the Community Industry Response Group, which was a new division formed by the RCMP specifically to deal with Indigenous land defenders that are protecting land from pipeline projects and, and old growth logging. The CERC has became infamous in the uh, police violence at Ferry Creek and the old growth logging on the, on the Vancouver Island on the coast. Um, they're the ones that were and also involved in the Wet'suwet'en police raids that happened in the territory, the violence there. And they're also involved in all the arrests that happened to us here at Tiny House Warriors. We have multiple trials that are happening um, even this month and continuing um, the rest of this year and into next year. Um, the charges are anywhere from um, breaching the injunction, breaching recognizance of bail, um, assault even. And so these are some of the serious charges that we are being faced with, assault of former police officers that now are security officers where we have never assaulted them. They, in fact, are the ones assaulting our people and charging us with assault. So we've seen that time and time again when we're dealing with police brutality and police violence. The same things apply for us here on the ground. Um, the same police violence that the Blacks and other nationalities and races are fighting around, we're facing it right here on the front lines as land defenders. Um, the criminalization is very real. They're trying to give my twin sister actual jail time um, for her involvement of going to the Thompson Rivers University in Kamloops to say no to Frank Iacobucci, a retired Supreme Court justice who was hired by Trudeau and the government of Canada to push through the third phase of Indigenous consultation because all the other phases have failed. Um, my sisters and brother-in-law, three of the tiny house warriors attended that round table only to be arrested and all charged with assault um, by federal security, RCMP, um, division liaison teams, um, TMX security. The ones that head the TMX security right now, the pipeline security are all former RCMP that have extensive um, experience on the police force, including maybe 28 years of one of the, the men that we just face off on a daily basis here at our village, they're just right on the other side of the fence. Um, this is not right as Indigenous people. We shouldn't be falling under a blanket injunction, court injunction system. We are Indigenous people. Our laws supersede these um, injunction laws. And um, we're being put under these same injunctions of the Jane Doe, John Doe, and we shouldn't be. Our, our laws and our rights to our land supersede these injunctions, yet they're continuing to criminalize us off of these injunctions. It's really important for Canada to see how Canada continues to usurp and they steal more Indigenous lands. We say right now they went and fenced off 11 acres for this industrial man camp and within the last three months have clear cut it, moved dirt, moved trailers in, moved an excessive amount of workers in, um, have four security at this end, another four security here, um, marked RCMPs surrounding us. So the police uh, um, surveillance and harassment is a day on a daily basis here and our documenting on our social media, our Twitter and our Instagram and Facebook accounts are just a testament to the amount of interference that the RCMP has in our daily lives. Um, Trans Mountain is owned by the government of Canada and Justin Trudeau is there at this UN climate talks, yet we are the most impacted on the ground as the indigenous people because we depend on the water, the salmon, our moose, our berries, our basket making, all of the things that we still make us who we are. We depend on the land and we can't have our culture, our language, who we are as Sukhwatmukh without a land base. And so thank you for acknowledging this dedication and this work by the Tiny House Warriors. We are constant. It's not a nine to five job. This is a 24 hour job every breath. We're praying for our lands, for our freedom, our liberation and our 
land and our self-determination. So thank you for this acknowledgement, Kukstang. You deserve all of this honor and it, we just wish that you weren't forced into this situation where you have to be doing this. But just before we close, um, Kenahus, it's so important. Tell us what you need. What do you need right now? I mean, this award comes with some funding to help with your legal costs. Do you need more funding? Do you need supplies? What do you need from us as other Indigenous peoples and all of these human rights allies who want to support your work? Um, yes, we're actually battling a bunch of legal um, charges right now. So we have a legal fund. It's on GoFundMe, um, Tiny House Warriors Legal Defense Fund on, on GoFundMe. And we're raising $50,000 just for our immediate lawyer costs of our trials and our court dates that are coming up. I'm sure we're going to be needing more because there's more um, construction taking place and there's going to be more direct action also taking place. So that's one way. Also on our website, tinyhousewarriors.com, there's also a donate um, button. But also, it's just not the, the money that we're asking. We're asking for people to start to put their skills to use. And if you have specific skills that you would like to volunteer time with Tiny House Warriors, um, please reach out to us. Uh, my my Facebook or, um, and my Twitter or Instagram are also just kanahusmanual at gmail.com. I have that open for everybody to reach out. I respond to all of my emails. Um, we have a human rights community that we've been um, working with and building. Uh, we had a human rights symposium last year and with amazing human rights defenders, we're asking um, also if our friends here could also join this um, community where we continue to address issues and raise issues and also ask for your support in drafting open letters to Justin Trudeau, open letters to the world to really expose what's happening here on the ground. Human rights advocates are needed um, on the ground because sometimes we are here um, stuck with very little, little communication or technical um, support to be able to get everything out to the world. Um, just thank you. We also need uh, people who are willing to do direct action on the ground, um, people who want to have just autonomous, anonymous, small affinity groups of five or more people to come together to do direct actions that may or may not be arrestable actions, but all together with us to stop a pipeline. We just had um, Protect the Planet tree sitters that came here and built a tree sit, a little tiny house 40 feet up into the trees. So we have a tiny house tree sit now, and that's one of our collaborations we did, and we're looking forward to collaborate with more land defenders and human rights defenders out there. Thank you. Well, that's fantastic. I think that's the most important part is to make sure that we do the call out and we don't stop, that this is ongoing and you need ongoing support. Um, thank you to the Carol Geller Human Rights Award Committee, Murray, to his spirit and that he wanted to make sure that Kanahus got this, Sheila Day for being a fantastic friend and advocate and inspiration and helping me and other Indigenous women, you know, be um, human rights advocates and Kathleen for your just your powerful work and showing the world that you can fight an industry and win. It might take a long time. It might take a lot of effort, but every little success counts. We're winning every day and we need to celebrate that. And Gannon was just is one of those people that every day I get up and I have nothing to complain about because I know there's warriors on the ground and that, oh my goodness, that just inspires me every day. And so Sheila and Kathleen and Chief Judy, I mean, the way you support the warriors on the ground, you know, so oftentimes government tries to divide and conquer the politicians and the grassroots. And you're just one of those people where we're all together in this together. And, and the work you do is so inspiring. And and, you know, also Carol Geller, I know she's not here. This award is in her name and in her honor and all of the work she did, all of the alliances and all of the friendships and partnerships that she helped work on, because this is how we're going to get it done. Indigenous land defenders, human rights advocates, Black Lives Matter, you know, all of these groups all coming together to say, you know what, we care about human rights and we actually care about the fate of the planet. And so someday 
these, you know, corporations are just going to be a has beens. They're not going to exist anymore. And it's going to be really governance by the people for the planet. And so thank you all. And please, to everyone who's watching or listening, heed these calls. We need help on an ongoing basis. You've got Canada's manual and her mom and her and her and her tiny house warriors. They need support every day. And winter's coming. So they're also probably couldn't need things like supplies. Do what you can to help support Tiny House Warriors. They are kick butt, hardcore warriors, making sure that we're good. Thank you, everybody, for being part of this. And thank you all for acknowledging Canahoos and Tiny House Warriors. And I'll make sure to post links uh, after this video about where you can donate, how you can get a hold of Canahoos, and all of the acknowledgements. And we're just going to write about it, share about it, scream about it until we get what it is that we want. Thank you all for being a part of this event. And keep warrioring on. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll